Hello, today I'm going to be showing you my collection of makeup, skincare, and body care. Um, the reason why I'm filming this video is because I feel like I have a particularly small and curated makeup collection. Um, and so that is the main reason why I'm filming this. Um, all of my makeup is in this small case. Um, I got this from Amazon. And so we will go through this case first. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you would like to get yourself a drink, go ahead and do that. And we'll just get started. So this is all of my makeup. Um, and it all fits in here. Except for like two palettes, which I'll show you. So we'll just go through the categories one by one. I will show you what I have and then what I would ideally like to be at as far as numbers per category. So, when you open it, this is what it looks like. This is the product portion and then up here there's like a flap with a bunch of brushes. And then this zippers in the back and I can stick some of my larger palettes and larger makeup items and we will get to those so starting with this i uh, will start with this section first so this is like the body uh like foundation portion of it like the base so the first thing i have are these two items <clears throat> so starting first with face primers, these are the two face primers I have. Um, this one is the Professional by Benefit, a cult classic. Everyone knows about this one. And then this one is actually a decanted primer. So um, it's a silicone based primer that I've been trying to use up for ages. Um, it is the Bare Minerals prime time foundation primer um this came in like a little pump and i pumped it out until i couldn't get any more but then i cut it open and there was so much product left on the sides so i've been using this for probably two years and i will be glad when that primer is finished up and i can move on to this tube of primers the current number I have is two, and I would like to get down to one. The next category is the Smashbox Eye Primer. Well, this is what I use um, to keep my um, like eyeshadows in place. Um, however, I don't feel like it does that much for me. So when I finally use this, I will be in the market for a new eye primer. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know. Um, the thing is that I feel like I'm going to be using this for ages because I just squeeze out the tiniest amount and then I put it on my finger, dab it between my fingers and put it all over my eyes. So I feel like I'm going to be working on this forever. And so yeah, I'm like right there. My current category for this is one and I would like to keep it at one. This is the only concealer I have and I do not like this. This is a Becca concealer. I believe I picked this up at maybe Marshalls when Becca went out of business. It is the light shifting brightening concealer and it has like a little fuzzy foot on the end. The problem with this is there's like no coverage with it. So I get where they say like it's lightning because it has like this glowy luminosity to it, but it is not a concealer. And it, since it's not a concealer, I don't feel like I have a real use for this. Um, but yeah, this is the only concealer I have. Uh, currently, this category is at one, and I would like to keep it at one. Uh, so I will try and use this up, and then 
I will go out and get a, like a proper concealer. This is my contour stick. So I have been enjoying this a lot. Um, this category is like contours and bronzers and I only have one contour. So I use this occasionally just to deepen the hollows of my cheeks and make it look like I work out even though I don't. And so far I've been liking it. It does blend out fairly nicely, which I appreciate. And it is also cool toned, so it's not too orange for me. And yeah, I've been enjoying this so far. Um, currently my bronzers and contours category is at one and I would like to keep it at one. Uh, this is my foundation. I'm currently working on panning this uh, L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Concealer. I'm about halfway done with it. It's nice because it comes with a pump. And overall, I feel like it's a decent concealer for, oh sorry, de it's a decent foundation for a drugstore. Um, these other two are more high end. And I do like these ones as well. And no complaints as far as foundations. Um, the only complaint I have is that if you have really, really dry skin, which I know I have suffered a lot with this winter, uh, both this one and this one do not work well with super dry skin. They like enhance the look of the flakiness and the texture on your skin when it's dry and it's it's not a cute look. So you gotta make sure that your face is moisturized with both these cons uh, both these foundations. Um, I'm pretty much about this point to the concealer. I'm at the point where you can start seeing through this clear packaging. And yeah, this one's nice because it also has a pump. Um, yeah. And then I got this one because I liked the NARS Sheer Glow. It was one of my first high-end foundations from years and years ago. And so I decided to give this new NARS foundation a try. And so far I'm really liking it. But because I'm trying to pan this one, um, these two have not gotten a whole lot of love. Currently the count for my foundations is three. And ideally, I would like it to be at one. There's no need for me to have three foundations open at one time. Um, because most likely, you will see these next year. So it's going to take me quite a while to finish this. And then this. And then, then this. So you might see, you'll probably see these again. Uh, my next category is my blushes. So rearranging in the order from newest to oldest. Uh, oh, sorry, from oldest to newest. I have had this Besame Sweet Pink blush for over four years. And I'm finally getting to a point where I may be able to use it up. Um, this was the, like, the only blush that I've had for years. And I think it just had a lot of product in it. And so that's why it took me so long. Um, this blush has treated me really well. I really did enjoy it. Um, I recently repressed it because the foundation was all built up along the sides. So I um, brought all that extra product down to the center and repressed it with a little bit of alcohol. And it definitely did change the consistency of it it's a lot more powdery and there's a lot of more kick up now um but overall i'm just gonna use it until it's done uh this next blush that i have is a stila blush in soul seduction this one looks like it has less product in it it's a smaller pan and so I'm hoping that I will be able to use this up fairly quickly. And then this 
um, blush I actually purchased recently in December of 2022. Um, ColourPop was having a huge 75-70% off sale at the end of the year, so I picked this up. And uh, this is what it looks like. It's a cute little heart, and the blush is more like peachy pink, coral pink. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, currently, my blush number is at three, and I would like to get it down to one. I think as soon as I finish this one up, I will be working on this one. And uh, because it takes me so long to finish blush, you'll probably see this one at the end, uh, at the beginning of next year. Uh, the next category is highlighter. Um, this is the only highlighter I have, and it's actually a product I regret purchasing. Um, this is another ColourPop product that I picked up at the end of the year, but when I purchased it, I wasn't fully aware of like its purpose and what it's supposed to be. So I bought this thinking I could use it as a face highlighter, but as you can see, it says so body on it, and it's actually a body highlighter so something that you would use on your arms and your legs to make them very glowy and like goddess looking um so because it's supposed to be used on the body it is way like too glittery to use on the face or if it's not too glittery for you, it's something that I definitely would prefer not to use on my face. Um, I prefer like a more finely milled highlight. This is the only highlight I have. My current highlighter calendar, uh, my current highlighter category number is one, and I have one, so I will either use this to the best of my ability when I go on like a summer vacation or I will end up giving it away. My next category is face powders. I have three in my um, current collection and honestly, I would like to be down to zero. Um, my skin is very like very dry and so the second i put even more powder on it after i put on my foundation to like set down my face um it just sucks all the life out of my skin and it does not feel very comfortable and so for that reason i kind of don't have a lot of use for these powders in my collection um i did see there was a YouTuber, and I'll put their name on the screen now, and they did recommend, like, putting face powders in your hair, like a, uh, like a dry shampoo, in order to reduce oiliness on your no, on your, like, on the days that you don't wash your hair. And I did try that, and honestly, I didn't really notice a difference. So, I think what I'm going to be using these for... Is I'll try it a couple more times in my hair, but most likely I'll just be using this um, essentially as like a, a, a neutral skin color to blend out my eyeshadow. Um, this Kat Von D one I've had for so long, so it's the one that I'm working on the most. But yeah, I just don't use face powders. I've tried them. It just... It's not something that I get a lot of use out of. You can see that I, there's been a lot of progress in this container. But this container is brand spanking new. And so there's no progress on this one. And this one's also brand new. So I haven't been using it a lot. So currently this product this category is at three, and I would like to have it at zero. These are all the current eyeshadow palettes I have. 
Uh, so I will go through these one by one. This first one is an I Love Bloom Sephora palette in Peony. Um, it's really nice because it has gotten has lots of neutral shades for somebody who prefers neutral makeup or somebody who's just starting. It has three shimmers and three well four mattes. Um this is a bit too light for me, so at some point when I do decide to pan this palette, I will have to think about frankening this shade with something else to make it a bit closer and more usable. The next palette is Clay It Cool by Colourpop. This is a really cool palette because it also has a lot of neutral shades. Um, you can start to see what I prefer in eyeshadow. This has four shimmers and five mattes. And then this one down here is like a cream shade. So I will have to start using up this cream shade so that it doesn't go bad probably soon after I use up my eyeshadow primer. This one is the Inner Peach ColourPop palette. I will put a photo up of what it is supposed to look like. Um, I actually bought this less because of the actual eyeshadows inside of it and more um, because this was a magnetic palette. Um, so I actually took the Inner Peach eyeshadows that were in here and put this uh, put them in this Altoid tin and separated them with a bit of a uh, paper towel and that is where they are being kept for the time being and then what is actually in the shot um palette is my Lorac Pro so I'm actually working on panning it this year that is a video coming up um, I finished one shadow completely in this palette, and then I hit a pan, a uh, hit pan on a few others. I'll insert the picture now of what this palette looked like before I uh, departed a lot of the shadows. So this is what the current palette looks like. As you can see, we have a really light skin shade that's really too light for me. Crepe is a pan, uh, is a completely empty pan that I used up. Then we have Mist, which is a really light gray. Uh, here we have Snow, Tool, and these are both shimmers, really light shimmers. Over here we have, um, what is that? Olive and Dark Roast. And these are both metallic shades. Uh, and then over here we have Glacier and Deep Fog. Glacier does have some shimmer to it. And then these are all essentially various shades of black. Um, I really don't prefer dark eyeshadows. So as I start using this palette up, I will be frankening these together with these to lighten them and make them more usable for me. Uh, let me show you the inside of this color pop palette. So as the, as the current Lorac Pro palette is set up, it just wasn't inspiring to me. And somebody who is like not, you know, a makeup artist, I'm just like a normal everyday like person who uses makeup, I find it really hard to pick out shades and make a cohesive eye look. So what I did with 20 of the shades was I, when I depotted, I paired them into uh, duos. So these are eyeshadow looks that I felt were fairly, or they're, they're eyeshadows that I feel like complement each other in sets of two. And this is what I've been using on a day-to-day -day basis. So it makes it pretty easy and straightforward. As you can see, I have quite a bit of pan in Dusty Mauve and in Cider, as well as Vantage. So those are the three pans that I have. And this is currently my project pan. 
And so yeah, as I use up shades, I will frank in more shades from this palette and put them in here so that they can be used. But this is my day, daily, everyday go-to palette. Um, I do roll in focus shades. So I focus on a shade for 10 uses. And so for the most part, recently I've been using these two shades. And then the focus shade that I rolled in was actually this first uh, ColourPop shadow. And it's Let Me Explain. And this is actually a really pretty, like, all over neutral eye eyeshadow. And so, yeah, that's been, like, all over the lid. And then I would pick a duo in here for my crease and um, to darken my outer V. So yeah, those are all my eyeshadow palettes. I currently have four, and I would like to narrow it down to two. So once this gets cleared out, I can put these shadows back in here, and then I think I'll start focusing on these one, this one, just because the Lorac Pro and the Eye Bloom are the oldest in my collection. These two eyeshadows are the only single eyeshadows I have in my collection. This Urban Decay is called Foxy, and it is a neutral um, shade that I can use to blend out my transition up to my eyebrow or to set my eyelid primer. And yeah, it's just a very neutral. This is a project that I, uh, this is an eyeshadow that I am working on panning just because I have had it for such a long time. So I'm focusing on this one. And then the next shadow I got was, I believe it was a Sephora birthday gift. And this is a cream eyelid shadow by Laura Mercier in Strapless. It's a nice shimmer. It's a nice cream eyeshadow. Um, it is a bit dark, so unfortunately I can't use it as like a brow bone highlight or an inner highlight, which is kind of a bummer and would be the most useful cream eye stick shadow that I would use that for. But I'm going to have to experiment and find different ways to use this. Uh, currently, my collection for single eyeshadows is at, at two. And, uh, yeah, that's fine. I don't really feel like that's too much, but hopefully I'll use this up and then I'll just have one. Or if I want to bring something else in, I can do that. I currently have two eyeliners. Uh, the one that I'm currently working on is the Tartist Black in Double Take. It was one of the eyeliners by Tarte that has a marker end on one end and then it has a pencil on the other. I did use the pencil completely up so that has been used so now I'm just working on the liquid liner portion of this eyeliner. I feel like it's pretty good. It does stay put. I have fairly watery eyes so I do need something that is going to last throughout the day and there's no complaints for this one. Uh, this was another eyeliner that I picked up by Sephora. It is waterproof and I was told that it was a dupe to the Kat Von D uh, Trooper liner and we will see. I haven't used this too much I think I used it once or twice and felt like it was just okay. So we will see if this is a true dupe. Um, at the time when I bought this, you know, Kat Van D was going through a huge scandal. And so I didn't want to purchase from her brand at the time. But now that she is not associated with the company, I still hesitate for, to buy from KVD Beauty, but I've come around more to the idea. So if something finds its way into my collection, I will use it. But at the time, I was trying to find a dupe for that liner, and this is what I was referred to. 
Uh, my current collection right now is two and I would like to get this down to one. Since I really only use a black liner, it doesn't really make sense for me to have two open liners in my collection. So I will work on using this up and then as soon as this starts skipping or doesn't give me a smooth black opaque line, then I will um, toss this and start using this one. Uh, this is the only mascara in my collection. This is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Waterproof Mascara. This must have run some sort of limited edition, like, butterfly collection. Uh, it's perfectly fine. Um, it doesn't seem to make my eyes water that much, which is good. And I haven't had a trouble taking it off, even though it is waterproof. Uh, the current brush has more of like that hourglass shape and I feel like it is a very clumpy formula. So sometimes I do have to go in with an eyelash brush after I'm done using this uh, just to kind of comb out my lashes and make sure there's no clumps. I don't like clumpy eyelashes and I also don't like spidery eyelashes. I prefer very like natural eyelashes and I usually use mascara to give me a bit of length and also just to darken my very blonde light colored eyelashes. Uh, currently this category is at one and I would like to keep it at one. Um, the way that I use makeup, it really doesn't make sense to have more than one black mascara open at a time for me. This is my current number of lip balms. I'm currently working on this Carmex lip balm, which is currently the oldest. Um, this is interesting just because it's got a tube and I feel like a little tiny bit goes you a long ways. So I feel like I will be working on this for a while. It's like midway through the C and hopefully we will see progress on it as it goes. Uh, this next one is a chapstick, a cherry chapstick, very iconic. She is a moment and she's been around for a while. This is a vegan chapstick. I think it was called like Raw, R-A-W. Uh, this is a fun chapstick because it smells like, it smells like chocolate covered like raspberries. Um, I actually really enjoy the scent of it. Uh, although I did peel off the label because I get fidgety and bored and sometimes I just peel off the stickers on my lip balms. These are two lip, gloss, uh, lip balms from Glacier. Um, this rose one really smells rosy, so if you're not going to like the scent of rose then you might not like this one and this one uh cherry this cherry chapstick uh this cherry lip balm does remind me a lot of the og cherry chapstick um the only thing that i do not like about these is unlike the carmax and these mentha uh, these do not have an applicator so you um put something on your finger and then you just wipe it off and apply it to your lips um, for a lot of people, I'm sure that's fine and that doesn't bother them, but I really, like, you may notice in my collection that I don't have a lot of potted makeup, like potted foundations, potted eyeshadows, um, I don't, or even potted lipsticks. I don't like dipping my fingers into cosmetics. I much prefer an applicator that comes straight from the tube. Um, this is a vanilla Oh, it's not even vanilla. It's just regular Boats Bees chapstick. And I keep this with me in my purse. So I have an everyday uh, neutral chapstick that I can apply if I need it. And then these two, you can actually get these at Bath & Body Works. Um, I have the regular Menta Lip Shine in 
it's very mint forward and then i also picked up this one which was vanilla supreme vanilla supreme uh 2x same thing these are made by the big loco and you can find them at bath and body works and i mostly picked up these this one because um it reminded me of my childhood. My mom used to carry these around with her a lot. And so these are what I would use as a kid for a chapstick. Very minty, almost like breath freshener minty. And they have a really nice applicator tip so that I don't have to use my fingers when I apply this type of product. Currently, I have eight. Um... My ideal number would be two, one for my home and one for my purse. So we will see how low we can get that number this year. Okay, the next category is lip liner. I currently have three lip liners and ideally I would only have two lip liners, one for a really, really dark lipstick that's going to be very messy and noticeable once it goes outside my lips. And the second one is for a very red lipstick, which I tend to wear a lot. Um, that's also gonna be messy if it gets outside of my lip line. Um, the current ones that I have is a MAC lip liner uh, in Beat. This one's okay. Um, it's fairly rosy, so I don't feel like I can wear it with too dark of lipsticks, but it's fine. I don't, to be honest with you, I don't wear a lot of lip liner. It's not something that occurs to, to me when I put on lipstick, and so I don't feel like I make a lot of progress on these types of products. Uh, the next one is an Urban Decay 24-7 uh, lip pencil in Gubby, G-U-B-B-Y. It's a very sparkly pink lip liner. And so when I do wear this, I put it all over the lips and then put a clear lip gloss or a lip balm over it. Um, I don't like this. So this is one of the pencils that I am trying to use up and get out of my collection. The last lip liner I have is another Urban Decay. This was a uh, collaboration with Gwen Stefani in Rock Steady. I believe she also had a lipstick, but I, at the time I only picked up the lip liner. That is what it looks like. And sometimes I use this to line my lips when I'm wearing red lipstick. Currently, I have three and I would like to get this down to two. These are all the lipsticks, um, lip glosses, tinted, uh, highly pigmented lip balms that I currently have in my collection. This comes to 25 and my ideal number is five. Um, as you can see, seven of them are minis or small uh, Dulex samples. Uh, this is something that I got from a Sephora point purchase and it is the uh, infamous Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. I'm very glad that I got this in like a mini because it does not look good with my skin. I feel like it's almost too pale and too like slightly orangey. Um, it's not really orangey, but it's very, it's like more warm toned and it, I don't know, it just doesn't feel good on me. So it doesn't look that good on me. So I am excited that I did not purchase a full size because that would have been difficult for me to pan. Uh, this one 
and these five minis are all from Besame and these are a gift that I got from my significant other back in I think it was the Christmas of 2021 and um, Besame is well known for doing like vintage inspired cosmetics so for example this red velvet is one of my favorite shades of red lipstick it's also slightly sentimental but i'll show you the bullet so as you can see it says like besame on the side and it's a very flat tipped lipstick which makes it easy to have like a corner to make a crisp line uh very beautiful packaging love it a lot and then because i have all these smaller ones um you can see variations of like reds and see if maybe there's a tone that will work better for you Anything else that's super, super noticeable. Um, I really like these hourglass lipsticks. Um, I was tapped into these by Beauty News with Kat and Haley. Uh, Beauty News no longer like uploads on their channel, but I love these lipsticks. And I would buy more if I didn't have 25, but I have 25 and that is too much for me. Um, the most recent purchase for this collection was probably the Shiseido lipstick in Kitten Heels. Um, as far as my preference when it comes to lipsticks, I like a neutral pinky, like a neutral pinky lipstick, or I like a really bright red. Um, hmm. these up here are the ones that I am trying to pan and work through this year. So I have a liquid lipstick um, from MAC that's called, it's a retro matte liquid lip color to matte with love. And as you can see, I do have some panning or some windowing happening on that. The next one is this Clinique Red Red Red. Um, I have had this for a while and I am trying to use it up. And these Benny Tint, like tinted uh, lip tinters. I am also trying to use these up this year as well. Um, yeah, not much else to say. I would put this in the lip balm collection, but the thing about this is it's so pigmented. It's so pigmented that I can't really put it on without a near uh, like you can a normal lip balm. And also the weird shape of it doesn't allow me to really get a crisp line. So I don't really enjoy Kosas. I know that they have come out with a lot of stuff, but I just don't feel like I've gotten like a positive user experience from them. And that pretty much concludes all of my makeup. Um, the only thing left in here that I want to point out, so I have this meal, this compact meal that I got. I have a lip sharpener or lip pencil sharpener. I have my beauty blender that needs to be cleaned. Uh, a few hair ties and a barrette. Up here in the top, I don't have anything back here, but I keep those palettes back there. And then here are my brushes. So this is a brush that I use to comb out my eyelashes. This is a derma planer to sometimes shave the hair off my face. This is a foundation brush that I haven't really used since I started using a beauty blender. This is a finishing brush that I was using to apply face powder when I attempted that. This is my blush brush. But I think I'm going to get a new brush just because I've had this for a while. 
this is a really thin bent eyeliner pencil that I don't really use because I use um, like liquid eyeliners for in the in the pen form. And then these are my eyeshadow brushes. So this is an eyeshadow brush that I got with my very first, like one of my first, oof, oof, we won't do that, very powdery. Um, this is one of the first brushes that I got with my Modern Renaissance ADH palette. And then these are a couple other double-sided brushes that I have from It Cosmetics. And then I don't really use this, but you know, you can never have too many brushes. So I'm gonna put this back together right in front of you and then we will get on to my skincare. Okay, so that looks like that is everything back in its rightful home. So we will move on to the skincare. Uh, you may consider this one makeup, but I'm just putting this in skincare. I only have two facial sprays. One is the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray. I am about here at the beginning of the year. Um, I don't really use this, so I need to make more of a concerted effort when I think about it. And then this one I like to use during the summer and I actually keep it in my fridge so it's cool. It's essentially just like a facial water misting spray um, just to like keep you cool and maybe hydrate your face a little bit if you needed something like that. I currently have two and I don't mind having one so I would like to just decrease this by one. This next category is my um, SPF or my sunscreen. Two are more for my body. One is for my face. Um, I try to wear SPF every day and I would like to get this, um, get this category down to one. Um, I mostly bought an extra one just because I was on vacation and I forgot to pack my original sunscreen. This one smells very nostalgic, like you think sunscreen smells. Like it smells like going to the pool in the middle of July. Um, I like this one because of the way it feels on my skin. It doesn't leave a greasy feeling. And then this one is a very nice... Facial SPF, even though it's a bit older, so it may the SPF in this may start to expire. It's 60 SPF and it's super liquidy. Like there's even like some balls in here, so when you shake it, it like mixes it all up. So if you're looking for a liquidy moisturizer, I got this from La Roche Per Se website. And it's okay. I don't mind it. It's not bad. Uh, the next thing that's kind of adjacent to this is this after sun gel. So in case you get too sunburnt, I always have a bottle of this. I think this is just a generic brand. As you can see, I haven't even opened it yet. But sometimes in the summer, living in a hotter climate, I get burnt pretty bad. And so I would always like to keep some alo on, on hand just in case if I need it. That is one, and I am fine with having only one. Uh, this next category is moisturizers. I have two, and I am currently fine with keeping it at two. This is like your everyday 
moisturizer i use this in the morning and in the evening it's a very nice like hydro gel feeling moisturizer i would purchase this again the next one is a really like fairly decent sized jar of the ultra facial overnight uh, rehydrating mask this is a very thick mask um originally i did regret poaching purchasing this just because it was such a big um thing and i didn't think i was going to be going through it all but then when when winter hit my skin was so dry and i put huge layers of this on my face and let it sit for 20 minutes and it did wonders at bringing moisture back into my skin um i don't know if i would recommend it i'm sure there's a more hydrating facial mask out there but now that i've worked with it and i've experimented and used half of it i understand this product a bit more and uh, i'm fine with it being in my collection after moisturizers the next category that i have is facial oils um, I sometimes use this at night. It has retinol and peptides in it and it's supposed to smooth and firm the face and help with skin texture. Uh, it has that little like uh, eyedropper thing so I can put it in the palm of my hand. But to be honest with you, I mean the line is like all the way up here. I just don't use it. Um, I don't really love the feeling of going to sleep with a really oily face. I much rather prefer my moisturizers and my face creams to soak into the skin. And this doesn't really sit in or soak into my skin. It just kind of stays on top. And I will be grateful when I finally use this up enough to get it out of my project or out of my collection. Uh, this next project or this next category is eye drops. So I have really watery eyes. So I'm trying to figure out a item that will essentially help my eyes from watering so much and ruining my eye makeup. I'm trying these Refresh Active, uh, Active Advanced Eye Drops. They come in like these single use little containers. But to be honest with you, you know, like one container may probably last you like three or four uses. If you just like, when you tear this off, just pop it back on after you take it off. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really think that they're working to make my eyes less watery. Um, but somebody did recommend them in the beauty community. And so I did try them. Um, obviously I have not gotten through the whole package yet, so maybe I'll do a more in-depth review once I have used this up. This next category is my eye creams. Uh, so I'm currently working on this Trader Joe's Supreme Hydrating Eye Cream. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't really think it does that much. I'm not enthused about the smell. It has a very strong, like, chamomile, like, I don't know, like, some sort of floral smell that I'm just not a fan of. Sometimes I use this all over the face as my nighttime moisturizer, and I am desperately trying to use this up as fast as I can. These other two I purchased recently. This is the Peter Thomas Roth Potency Power Eye Cream. It's essentially a vitamin C eye cream. And this one is the uh, Peter Thomas Roth Retinol Infusion PM Eye Cream. I mostly wanted this one, but they came in a package. Um, this one was recommended by Hiram um, as the only eye cream that he uses. And so I wanted to try it out. But if you have watery eyes, you got to be careful because this stuff, because it's vitamin C, it has like that same, it has that same burn. So if you have watery eyes and you're like, oh, 
and so what happens is my eyes water and then this sometimes this product gets into my eyes and it it burns it stings right because it's vitamin c so like i'm sure there's like maybe some like citrus magic in here and it burns my eyes so i don't know how but maybe it works for you if you don't have watery eyes but i these are two things that i'm just trying to use up i don't really feel super ecstatic and i haven't really noticed any huge difference with these same as this i don't know people are like preaching use eye cream use eye cream but to be honest, I, I really haven't noticed a difference. These are all my serums or like facial treatments. Three of these are from The Ordinary and one is from um, a different brand. Um, I usually put on... So I'm trying to use up the, the ones by The Ordinary before I start using up this one. So essentially what I do is when I get out of the shower, I use either this niacinamide serum if I have some acne or if my skin is feeling particularly dry, as always, I'll put the hyaluronic acid on. And essentially, I put these on before I apply my moisturizer for the day. And that is how I've been using them up. It seems like it takes a long time to use up one of these bottles. Um, so yes, these are work in process, uh, work in progress. And then I'm also trying to use this AHA 30% BHA 2% peeling solution. Um, you may have seen this. This has been super popular on TikTok and YouTube and like it looks like blood when you put it on your face. I use it after the shower, but just be warned if you use it after the shower, your pores will have opened up. And putting this on is going to burn your skin. It is going to sting your skin. So only keep this on for 10 minutes. They say that several times on the back in the instructions. It is an acid and you don't want to burn your skin. I use this sparingly just because I feel like it is very potent. Um, and I don't want to do any of your damage to my skin. This last one is an all-in-one facial, uh, facial serum supposed to brighten, hydrate, plump, and smooth. Um, I haven't used it all that much to give a review, um, but in the future, I think I will be going with serums more like this than opposed to these from The Ordinary because I like, like an all-in-one product. I'm all about simplifying my life and simplifying my skincare is something that I'm striving for. So, uh, I like The Ordinary. I do feel like they have very good products and they have come a long way uh, since I first purchased from them. But at this point in time, I'm just not an expert with skincare. I don't think I ever will be. And having individual bottles that do individual things, I just don't feel it's very efficient. So, yes. I have four, um, and I would like to have two. So I would like to have one serum that does a bit of everything like this, and then a serum or treatment for heavy-duty exfoliation. Okay, so this is all of my cleansers slash makeup removers and this is what I use um, both at the beginning of my day and the end of my day just to make sure that my face is clean and to prevent uh, as much acne as possible. Um, the These two, so I like to do a double cleanse and I don't know if how I do it is how other people do it. But essentially, I either use Marcella water and a cotton round, or I use a Neutrogena uh, makeup remover wipe to do the first pass. And this is to get off um, any stubborn 
waterproof makeup like uh, my mascara or if I have a liquid lipstick on that day this is the first pass and then I go in with a second cleanser which is either this La Roche Per Se Tolerine or this Bioma cleanser um to do a second pass just to make sure that my face is truly clean. These two are products that I keep in my shower. So I am working through this oil-free acne uh, face wash and pink grapefruit. As you can see, I probably just have like one or two loose's left there at the bottom. I did not like this. I used this in high school i use this in college but i tell you why at this particular bottle is gonna make me never use this face wash again this uh opening is too small for the micro beads and so it would get clogged so there and there's no way to take this cap off so it was just such a hassle to use and it took such a long time to use because the little tiny top kept getting clogged and I didn't have another container to put this in and so I felt like it took forever to use up. After I use this up, I'm going to try this CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser. Um, a lot of people talk about this cleanser online and in the skincare reddit and so i'm gonna go ahead and give this a try um it is a value size so i imagine that i will be using this for quite some time okay so now we're kind of on to the last portion of this video and this is all of the body care that i am attempting to use up and get out of my collection I'm going to start with my biggest category, which is lotions and body oils. Okay, so these are all of the lotions slash body oils that I have in my collection. Some of these are specifically targeting like stretch marks and like, yeah, stretch marks on the skin. Um, I got really into testing and trying to find the best like uh, body cream that will erase stretch marks. So that's the purpose of some of these. Um, I'm not necessarily too into that now, but I am trying to purchase uh, stuff in my collection. Also, as every woman living in the United States uh, in 2022, I feel like I have been gifted or somehow acquired a lot of Bath and Body Works lotions. They just seem to have come into my possession and I feel it would be wasteful to throw out full bodies of lotion. Um, the two products that I'm currently using to try and use up is the Stress Relief. Uh, aromatherapy by Bath and Body Works as well as this Moderna. This is for stretch marks to try and minimize the appearance of or redness specifically of stretch marks. Um, so those are the two products that I'm currently using. I like this glass bottle a lot. So once I finish this, I will probably transfer one of these two into this glass bottle to start using up. And then after I finish this, I'm going to start using this bio oil that I purchased. Uh, this bio oil is actually really expensive. Um, but just like with all oils, I don't really like the oily consistency. So I'm sure this will be quite a learning experience to implement this into my activity. I usually use both these creams after I take a shower. And that's really the only time I think about applying a lotion to my body um i use one pump each for my arms two pumps for my legs and then i apply this to my uh my stomach and my like i don't know i guess you call it saddlebag area your hip area where i do have stretch marks um the only thing that i'm not sure how to use is this lavender hydrating body oil 
Um, I've had this in my collection for quite some time and I've never figured out how to use it. Um, if you have recommendations on how you use body oil, please let me know in the comments. Um, maybe your suggestion will help me figure out how to use these. I currently have 10 and I really only need two. One all over and if I wanted to continue to try and treat uh, stretch marks, I would have one specifically for stretch marks. Uh, this is my perfume collection. Um, so this is the oldest one. This is the one I'm trying to use up. This is Fame by Lady Gaga. If you know when this came out, you will know that this is like probably, I don't know, five years old, maybe more. Um, I used up the black opium that was in here. And so I've been decanting some of the Fame by Lady Gaga into this tiny um, perfume sprayer so that I can use it up. But this has taken forever to use up. Absolutely forever. I do not like this smell anymore. I bought it when I was in a different time of my life and I'm just ready to move on from this perfume. The next perfume I have is this Replica fire, uh, by the Fireplace um, by Maison de Magellie. Uh, I butchered that, sorry. But I just refer to it as Replica by the Fireplace. This smells like, like you're, like you're by a fireplace. This smells like a fireplace. This is like the perfect perfume in the fall and winter, if you ask me. I don't know how well it's going to translate to fall or to spring and summer, but I am absolutely in love with this, and this was... Um, a very nice gift that my significant other purchased for me, and I am absolutely in love with this. This is Marc Jacob Perfect. This was recommended to me um, by another Sephora employee when I told them that I wanted to smell like, uh, like expensive sunscreen. Um, it definitely does smell like expensive, but it really doesn't suit me. It smells, it just smells like maybe a woman in her like 50s and 60s who has like Chanel, like track, like Chanel power suits. You know what I mean? Um, I think it's just a bit too mature for me. But I am going to, this is the one that I'm currently working on to use up, mostly because the top comes off and then hopefully I can decant the rest of this into here and um, the form factor and usability will let me use up that one. Yeah, not bad, not terrible, it doesn't smell bad, but it's just not something I'm gravitating towards. This is Black Opium by YSL. I love this. I love the way it smells like like coffee and chocolate um, and vanilla. I absolutely love this. I usually wear it um, on a day when I have a big event going on. It, I feel like it gives me confidence. And yeah, I really enjoy this. And then because I currently have a Scentbird subscription, um from for christmas a family member got it for me uh, i'm currently trying out good habit ignite this smells like oranges and clementines very citrusy it's not something that i would normally wear however i have been liking it to use when i go to yoga just to kind of invigorate me and um get me feeling like fresh and and ready to work out so i don't mind this but it's not my top favorite perfumes out there um i currently have five i'm not going to count this since it is 
this. So I have five perfumes. I'm definitely working on using this up and I'll most likely use these up before the end of the year. Um, my ideal number is two, but we will see where we go. This is my category of hairspray and thermal sprays. So I have two hairsprays in my collection and then one thermal spray. I don't really, ooh, oops, oof, got lucky, didn't spill, okay, wow. <laughs> um, I, I have two perfumes and one styling spray. I don't really style my hair, so it's really hard for me to get through these. I have been using this on days when I want to use like a side ponytail and I want to uh, essentially make sure there's no like fly rays in my hair and so that's how i've been using it i really don't like the smell of this um but yes i'm trying to use this then i will go over to this one this i might need to mix in with my leave-in conditioners um but we'll see it's like a full bottle and i haven't even used it that much i don't even have a blow dryer at this time um, so I really don't know how I would use this besides mixing it with my leave-in conditioners. Uh, currently the number I have is three in this category and ultimately I would like to get it to zero. Uh, the, this category is my leave-in conditioner. This is the one I'm currently using it. I did mix this with a, another detangler as well as another thermal spray to try and use those up in my collection. So this used to be all the way down here. And since I filled it up, it's come all the way back up here. I love the smell of this. Um, I think this is discontinued, so you won't be able to find this anymore. Um, but it just smells absolutely divine. The other three that are in my collection is this Too Chic Ultra Revive Leave-In Conditioner. The It's a 10 Leave-In Plus Carotene. And this Bio Silk. I really love this Bio Silk, but it is the newest. So it is last in line to be used up. After I use my olive oil spray, I'll probably start working on It's a 10. And then this will be like in between. So yeah. Currently, I have four. I ultimately really only need one, so I would like to get this back down to one uh, bottle of leave-in conditioner. Uh, the next bottle is the olive oil hair oil. I use this to put in my hair to make it shiny and hydrated on days when I don't uh, wash my hair. Uh, it also helps me comb through my hair, and uh, yeah, I like this. Um, I don't think I can repurchase this because I think they don't make this anymore, um, but when I do finally use up the rest of this oil here, I will be purchasing another one. Um, this one smells divine, but I don't really notice it uh, repairing my hair in either way, so I, will, I would want to get a hair oil that maybe... Um, protects my ends to stop them from getting split ends um, or something like that. Um, this hair oil has lasted me four years. So, I mean, ultimately, I don't even think that I'll pick up a backup until I, I actually finish this completely. There's just no point in, in buying another hair oil when, like, I know that this is going to take me months to complete as is. So, yeah. Uh, this category is slightly combined. This is the body wash that I'm using, the shampoo, and the conditioner. Um, these are fine. I was feeling nostalgic when I bought these, and I used these a lot in high school, and I wanted to try them out again. They're perfectly fine. They're a bit thicker than what I'm used to when it comes to a shampoo and conditioner. Uh, this shampoo does need to sit in your hair for 
you know, three to five minutes before you lost it out in order to feel like you've gotten anything from it. Um, I don't think I would be repurchasing these, but I also don't mind having them. Uh, this is the first time trying this raw sugar moisture loving body wash. And if you're looking for a body wash that smells like, like watermelon Jolly Ranchers, this is what I recommend. It smells very good. It smells like watermelon Jolly Ranchers. And, um, yeah, I would purchase this again. I mean, it's just a body wash. I don't really notice anything super special about it. And so, yeah. And I and I think I purchased all these from like Tar I think I purchased this from Target. Um and I think I got these in Walmart when I was visiting a family member. So yeah. Uh one in each is perfect for me. Body wash, shampoo, conditioner, and one it will stay. So I usually don't purchase the backup until I'm on the very, very last use or until I've completely run out, and that is how I prefer to keep it. Uh, this next category is like mouth care. Um, I'm currently using up this toothpaste and um, we're getting ready to open a second bottle. Uh, this is an unopened travel size of toothpaste that I keep around in case I, you know, want to travel somewhere. I have two backups. Um, I'm not normal. It's not normal for me to have backups of toothpaste. It's just I think I purchased them um, on a deal where if you like buy two, you get one free. And so I was kind of roped into buying two because uh, I can't say no to a deal. And then this is the current mouthwash that I'm using. It is very intense. I don't like how intense and like alcohol-y and bony this is. So I don't think I would purchase this again. Also, I'm not a fan of like the big bottle. Like I wish it would have just been like, uh, attempted to save me a little space in my cabinet. But yes, this is what I'm using and we are slowly working through it. We're probably about right there. So yeah. Uh, this next category that I am trying to use up actually are these whitening strips. So I was put on a subscription with Burst, which is my toothbrush, and they sent me these whitening strips like every three months. But because I really don't use whitening strips, I have so many of these um, little packets and so I would like to use them up before they go bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really use writing strips, so I guess I purchased them. So maybe I should try and make a dent in them. I probably have about 40 of them. So, yeah. I canceled my subscription, by the way. So these are just the aftermath of a subscription that I forgot to cancel. These are the current nail polishes that I have in my collection. I am currently trying to use this blue one up called Maintain Avenue. Um, it takes a long time to use up uh, nail polishes. I usually repaint my nails once a week. And in my experience, a nail polish has about 20 applications. So I am slowly, slowly working through uh, this color and then after I use this color up I think I will start using up this one this Besame look uh, this Besame uh, nail polish was um, also given to me and it's supposedly the same lipstick color as the Besame red lipstick that I have in red velvet so that's nice um, but I've never actually, I don't know if I've ever actually opened it. And then this is a uh, top coat. I don't ever really use top coats. There's no particular reason. I just think it usually takes long enough to apply two coats of nail polish that by the time I've done it, I'm like ready to move on to something else. 
Uh, yeah, so currently I have seven and I would like to eventually only have one. Um, the rest of this is pretty much just like one-off things, so I'm going to go through them really quickly. Uh, this is the nail polish remover I use. Um, I only have one container of nail polish, and oof, and that's what I would like to keep is one bottle of nail polish remover. I'll probably just buy a small bottle and refill it when the time comes. Uh, this is nice because you can just stick your finger in there and swish your finger around and it'll remove your nail polish all nicely for you. So yes, one is where I want to be and one is where I'm at. These kind of go in line with the scar or stretch mark removal uh, lotions that I have. These are silicone scar sheets. Um, I don't really use these. Um, when you put them where your hips are, they kind of like roll up and become useless. So in my uh, estimation, these bandages aren't that ideal and so they've kind of just sit in my pantry i'm gonna try and use these up my ideal number would be zero and i currently have one i do have a pair of glasses so i do have some glass remover that i got from the place that i bought my eyeglasses uh, i'm currently attempting to use this up and i'm about a fifth or a sixth of the way through it I currently have one and I am at one. This is the deodorant I use, this Dove Advanced Care uh, Cucumber Smelling one. It smells like nice and fresh. Um, I've tried to get onto the natural deodorant train, but I just never... I never got into it. I always seemed to get rashes and my armpits would get very uncomfortable. So I switched back to Dove and I'm not looking back. I currently have one in my collection. I will always have one. I usually don't buy one until I absolutely run out. Um, but yeah, this is something I put on every single day and it probably contributes a lot to what other people think I smell like. This big bottle is the hand soap that I use. Um, I use a refill because I don't like buying individual plastic bottles of hand soap. So I just refill the hand soap dispenser that I have in my kitchen and in my bathroom. And this is what I'm currently using. It's a soft soap antibacterial uh, fresh citrus scent in like a very neon green color. Um, it's fine. I, I don't have a lot to say about it outside of its soap. It foams up and it does everything I, a soap I would want a soap to do. I really do wish that it was better smelling. I like the way like the Mrs. Myers hand soap smells. So I might try and get a refill of the Mrs. Myers hand soap once this is used up. Uh, currently, I only have one refill, and I would like to stay at one refill. Uh, this is the uh, floss that I use, this um, Orb Glide Pro Health uh, floss. Um, yeah, one is where I'm at, and one, I, one is where I would like to stay. Um, this is the Epsom salt that I use in my bath when I want to take a bath or when I want to soak my feet. Um, I have had troubles in the past with ingrown nails and this is what I've been recommended to use. Um, as you can see, I've used up quite a bit of the bag so there's only a little bit left. So we'll see if we can try and use that up this year. Uh, one is where I'm at and honestly, I feel like once I use this up, I don't really need to be in any rush to repurchase. So I could probably see this category being zero. Okay, the three other things are things that I forgot to uh, put in previous categories. Um, 
So this one probably could have gone in the lotion category. This is the hand sanitizer that I'm using um, by Bath & Body Works. It is the Vanilla Bean Noel scent. Very lovely scent, quite like it, but I don't use hand sanitizer. Um, it's not something that I think to reach for um, when I'm at a restaurant, unfortunately, and it's not something I use at home. So this has been a very slow going um, product for me to completely use up. Um, this could have gone in my perfumes category. So this is the French Lavender and Honey uh, Body Mist or Fragrance Mist. Um, this is fine. I don't love the way this smells, um, but I, for some reason, I have a hard time feeling like I can throw it away or declutter it. So I'm slowly using it up. I'm mostly using it to spray on my body after a shower, and um, sometimes I use it to spray the room. Uh, yeah. And then the last thing is this um, nail polish that I guess I forgot to put in with the other nail polishes. This is another Etsy or Essie um, nail polish in Lilacism. Very pretty color and I will be trying to use this one up as, uh, as well with the blue one and the red one. So that is all of my items in my current collection. Um, that is everything. So if you have any recommendations for other products I should try out, or if you have any um, suggestions on how to use up those body oils, I would really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I hope you had a good time and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.